The Summer Birds by Penelope Farmer, Part 2, 2. On the following Monday, on the following Monday morning, something happened that they had been afraid of. Despite their oath, Jammy Hat, too excited by his new skill, forgot that there should be no flying in the schoolyard and bounced into the air just as Miss Halibut came out through the big screen, came out through the big green door. He did not see her come. Look at me, he cried, flying backward and turning sharply in midair. I bet no one else can do that except me. Miss Halibut stared up at him, her mouth open. James Hat, she said loudly in her sternest voice. Jammy started and fell with an uncomfortable bump to the ground. He stood in front of her, his head hanging, very sheepish and not daring to look at the faces of the others as they gathered around in fearful curiosity, wondering what would happen next. James, or James, she said more gently, what were you doing just now? Please, miss, I was flying, he whispered, scarlet in the face. And how did you learn to do that, she asked him. Please, miss, he stammered, I, I was taught. And who, may I ask, taught you? Toddy, standing behind Miss Halibut, made frantic faces at Jammy to say as little as possible and on no account to mention anything about the boy. Please, miss, I... I... Please, I was just taught. The children sighed with relief. The, ch uh, the boy was saved for the moment, but although Miss Halibut left that point, she had not finished. James, she said very gently, I'm sure you're not alone in this. What about the others? Can they fly too? Tell me, James. Jammy blushed further and hung his head, his mischief gone in his shame before the others at what he had done to impress them, but he would not answer. Miss Halibut lifted her eyes from him and looked around at the watching children. You others, she said, tell me, can you all do this too? Surely James is not by himself. She looked around at the faces seeking when to question. Charlotte, she said, how about you? Can you fly? Charlotte, who knew she could not lie convincingly, blushed as red as Jammy. Yes, she said miserably, I can fly. But Toddy and the others had no time to glare at her, for the boy who had been whispering to Maggot suddenly stepped forward. Don't worry, he said very quietly to the circle of children. I think she's to be trusted, and he made himself visible to Miss Halibut. They can all fly, he stated dramatically, the red light in his eyes. And I taught them, he added grandly. Charlotte saw that he was enjoying himself hugely. So you taught them, I am glad to know, said Miss Halibut. None of them could quite make out the expression on her face. It was not angry, and it certainly was no expression of fear or even puzzlement. She seemed to accept the boy as just another child to be taught and scolded. It was a very strange expression on her usually correct face. Charlotte, looking at her, half wondered if it were not almost an expression of envy. There was silence in the yard. A bird sounded from the meadow. A pigeon purred softly in a chestnut tree. The sun beat on their bare, ba on their bare heads. They all watched the boy and their school teacher in, the midst, in their midst and waited for her to speak. Then Miss Halibut... Grim Miss Halibut, playing agitatedly with her spectacles cord, said breathlessly, I suppose, I suppose, I cannot learn to fly too. In their astonishment, they looked at the boy, looked from him back to Miss Halibut, from her back to him again. The boy said apologetically, No, I can only teach children. You are too old. Yes, I feared that, said Miss Halibut sadly. You are lucky children. I always wanted to fly at your age once. And I suppose as you're here, she said to the boy, I suppose you had better come to school and mind you behave. But gracious me, children, she cried suddenly looking at her watch. It's well after nine o'clock. I must fetch the bell or there will be no work done this morning. And she flustered back into the school, her hair falling down. The children left behind looked after her, feeling strangely disturbed and sad despite the sunlight. They felt sorry for her, but also sad for themselves because they had suddenly realized for perhaps the first time that they too would have to grow up and that this golden flying summer could not go on forever. Marley, rarely serious, said gravely, 
I suppose we won't be able to fly either for long. They were all thinking the same, except perhaps Jammy, and they knew she was right, so they went in more silently than usual at the summons of the big brass bell. After that, the boy came visibly to their lessons. He was not spared the lash of Miss Halibut's tongue, and it seemed that sometimes he regretted his visibility. The children could not quite understand how it was that she asked him no questions about himself, as most grown-ups would be bound to, insistent on an answer, as they, as they, in fact, in their curiosity, wanted to themselves. But she never appeared to show even faint interest in his mystery. They wondered if perhaps it was because she had known someone like him when she was a child. Whatever the truth, she seemed to them, now little as they themselves were, a person, not just someone who taught them arithmetic and geography and spelling. And that's the end of chapter two.